Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Colourpop Times Sailor Moon collection. I didn't think I was going to be getting this collection because, as you guys know, the shipping for this collection specifically wasn't shipping to a lot of countries. So it was very limited, it was in high demand, and it sold out so quick. But Colourpop was so kind enough to send me this collection, so I feel really lucky to even have it. So I'm really excited to review this collection for you guys. I know this collection came out so long ago, but hopefully you guys still want to see the products and what I created with it. You can see that I'm all decked out in Sailor Moon. I got this shirt from JJ's a couple days ago and I have my hair in two little buns, so we're just ready for this review. So let's just jump straight into it. So first I want to give you guys some product info. I know currently it is sold out and it sells out really quick, but I just want to give you a general overview of the collection. So there is a 12 pan palette. It is 20 US dollars. We then have two lip kits in both for the lip kits there is an ultra butter lip and an ultra glossy lip for 15 US dollars. If you do want to buy these shades individually that would be 8 US dollars. And then we also have two of the glitter gels for 9 US dollars. Two pressed blushes which are 12 US dollars and if you want to get the full set it is 89 USD. So I'm just going to go ahead and talk about product by product and I'll leave timestamps down below just in case you're here for like a specific product review. So timestamps will always be down below because people tell me I talk too much so I always leave timestamps for you guys. And obviously the first item that I want to talk about is the eyeshadow palette. So this is the Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon Press Powder Palette. The packaging is just iconic. It is just so unique. This flip thing just reminds me of my childhood. Like if you had stationery or like, I don't know, stickers that did this flip, you were cool as a kid. I think the packaging is just super unique. It stands out. And I think if you're a Sailor Moon fan, this would just hit you in the feels. If I'm being real honest here, I personally didn't grow up watching Sailor Moon. Like I I know what it is, I know the characters and everything like that, but I just never watched it. I think I'm a little bit too young. It wasn't on TV when I was growing up. And what I was watching when I was a kid was like card captors. If Colourpop did a collab with card captors, ugh, I would just cry. And I watched stuff like Naruto, Yu-Gi-Oh, One Piece, Late Bates. Mega Man, that kind of stuff. So like early 2000s things. I feel like Sailor Moon was a little bit more 90s. I don't know if it was, but I guess growing up in New Zealand, it wasn't on TV. But nonetheless, although I haven't seen Sailor Moon, I know a lot about it. I've always wanted to cosplay as Sailor Moon. But yeah, anyway, back to the review. This is what the palette looks like. It's a very pretty pastel, fun palette. Just what you would think of Sailor Moon. I'm not going to be too strict on the color choices because this is a heavily themed collection and palette. So the shades are going to match the Sailor Moon concept. And there's certain things that I would have wanted in this palette, but that's fine. You can use other palettes that you have in your collection. It's just when I do my reviews, I only use the palette on its own to see the full potential. So like one thing that I could say is like, obviously I would have wanted like a medium brown because all the shades in here are quite light. I would have liked something that I could deepen out my outer corners with, but obviously we all have a medium brown in our collection. So it's not a big deal. But overall, I really enjoyed the three looks that I did do with the palettes. I think they were fun, they were bright. I personally didn't have any issues with any of the shadows. I love Colourpop's press formula and everything worked well on my eyes, no patchiness. Everything was beautiful. Although you can see from far away in the pan there are a lot of mattes but some of them are actually their satin formulation. So they have a matte base and they have little specks of glitters in it. So it's like not a metallic, it's not a complete matte so it's a satin shadow. So you will have a little bit of fallout with the glitters and with this collection there's just a lot of glitter. I did one look yesterday and I feel like I still have some of the glitter just like here and there like I'll just find a little piece of glitter in my hair a little piece of glitter on my cheek or something so there's a lot of glitter in this collection I guess keep that in mind there's gonna be a bit of fallout but nonetheless I really enjoyed using this palette I think it was fun I think some of the shades in here are actually quite unique and I definitely can see myself coming back to this palette when I want to create more fun cutesy girly looks I did do shade by shade comparisons which you guys will see a little bit later on but I just want to talk about one palette comparison if you wanted to get like a general idea of of the vibe of this palette, I would say the It's All Good palette, the Mega palette, would probably have to be the closest. It has bits of the pinks and yellow in it, and you can see here, although they're not the same, I think It's All Good definitely has more of like a summer vibe, the more vibrant and vivid. And then the Sailor Moon palette is definitely more pastel and a little bit toned down, but you can see you sort of get the same vibe, and I think this eye look that I'm currently wearing, you definitely could do something very similar from the It's All Good palette. So I would say 
say the It's All Good palette is like the summertime big sister and the Sailor Moon palette is the springtime soft little sister. They're not the same but if you just wanted to get like a general vibe from this palette then I would say It's All Good is probably the most comparable palette overall. Next up I want to talk about the two ultra bottle lip. So we have Bunhead and Usagi. The one I'm currently wearing is Usagi but these two ultra bottle lips are so pretty and just so perfect for springtime. The ultra bottle lip pretty much is like a shared out matte liquid lipstick. It's really comfortable on the lips. It feels lightweight and I really like the effect that it gives to your lips. It just looks like you had a popsicle or something. It gives you that blurred effect. I honestly really like both. I think there's like a different look for either one. I would say Usagi is just a little bit darker so I prefer that but nonetheless both of the ultra blur lips are so pretty and they suited the entire collection so well. I think with all the looks these two lip colors just paired so well with all of them. And then for the ultra glossy lips we have Moon Tiara and Sailor Moon. So these glosses is definitely just a gloss. They are pretty sheer and they are just packed with a lot of glitters. The glitters aren't pretty or anything. The ultra glossy line is very fine, very comfortable on the lips. So these are the glosses that I would typically wear on top of another lip color. So you could wear it on top of the ultra blotter lip. So it's cute how it comes in two lip bundles, one for daytime and one for nighttime. I wouldn't say you have to have both because honestly, once it's on the lips, it does look pretty much the same. The tint that you see when it's in the tube, it definitely doesn't show that vibrant on your lips. Next we have the two glitter gels. So the purple one is called Moon Prism Powder and the pink one is called Moonlight Legend. So these glitter gels, it's not a new formula from Colourpop but I feel like these ones specifically are different. First off there is a scent. When I have used their glitter gels in the past they didn't have a scent and also these ones are extra goopy and liquidy. In the past the ones I have in my collection are quite dry. The gel isn't so wet and goopy. I don't know if my one, when I received it, it was already dried out slightly. I have a couple. I would say I have like eight of them and all of them feel quite dry. I do think these are really pretty. I've been getting into glitter a little bit more and I know glitter is almost sort of controversial. I know people don't like using this around their eyes but personally, I think glitter just vamps up your eye look and it just gives some sparkle to your eyes that a metallic shadow can't. But these specific glitter gels, I I think maybe because it's too goopy and like wet that when you place it on your eyes it's going to lift up the shadow that's underneath and that's going to cause patchiness. It's not so obvious like it's removing the eyeshadow underneath but it does lift it a little bit. I can see that it's not as smooth as I would like it. Maybe I just need to play around with it a little bit more but um, I feel like if it didn't lift up my eyeshadow underneath, then I wouldn't have a problem with it. And the glitter gels in the past that I have tried didn't do that because they were a lot drier. So I don't know if it's like a new formulation that they changed or what it is. The dimension they give to your eyes is just so, so pretty. So I definitely need to play around with them a little bit more. But yeah, I think... I personally wouldn't recommend it just because it lifts up the shadow underneath. And for the last two products in the collection are the two press blushes and the packaging again has that picture flip which is so stinging cute. It has the imprint of Luna. When I was doing my swatches for you guys I was like swatching it up here so I wouldn't get rid of Luna's face because I just want to keep this forever because it is so stinking cute. I did do like a cosplay inspired makeup of Luna like three years ago if you guys want to see it. It's in like my cosplay playlist. The two blushes are so pretty. Uh, I don't know you guys. Blushes to me. You could do no wrong with blushes honestly. If it's a pretty color, if it applies on nicely, I'm going to like it and I like both of these. I definitely would say I like this one a bit better from the moon because it is a matte. This one here called Cat's Eye is a satin so it's going to give you a bit of a sheen on your cheeks. I think for different looks I would actually prefer this one but for the most part I do prefer a matte blusher so I do like this one. But then again I think this one I do have something similar which you guys will see in my comparisons. This one's a little bit more unique in my collection. Alright you guys so that is pretty much my review on the Colourpop Time Sailor Moon collection. As for recommendations, I think for this collection, if you're just a fan of Sailor Moon, get this collection. It's literally the cutest thing ever. It definitely will spark some memories from your childhood. The names and everything like that. It's just so perfect and it's a really well thought out collection. So if you're a fan of Sailor Moon, I think you definitely would like this collection. But personally for me, the things that I will keep using in my day-to-day -day makeup is definitely the Ultra Blotter Lips and the Press Blushes. I think the palette I definitely will dive into here and there, but it's definitely not an everyday 
product. The glitters, I will try and use them a little bit more just to get a little bit better with the formulation, but the glitters are probably the thing that's like on the bottom of my list. So yeah, I'll just leave it at that and leave it up to you guys whether you want to purchase this or not. Because for me personally, anime holds like a big chunk of my heart and my childhood. So if like my favorite brand came out with like a One Piece collection or like a card captors collection, like I don't care if it sucks, I'm just gonna buy it. But I think overall the collection is really good. Everything worked well besides the glitters. So with the review being done, let's now move into the swatches, the comparisons, and then my three looks. Alright, so for the first look, I'm going to start off with the shade Twilight Flash, and this is going to be our transition shadow. I'm just going to place that into my crease using windshield wiping motions. I'm going to blend that up towards my brow bone and also towards the outer corners. You can see that the shadow on me, I do need to build it up, but I actually don't mind that because for a transition shadow, I don't want it too dark, and I think that when it's a buildable shadow, the transition does appear more smooth. But I'm also going to take this onto my lower lash line as well, just to to define that area. Next, I'm going into Tuxedo Rose and I'm going to start packing this on at the outer corners of my eyes. And I think putting Tuxedo Rose on top of Twilight Flash, it gives a very like pretty pinky peach tone. It's really refreshing to look at these colors on the eyes and I think it's perfect for springtime for those of you guys that are in spring and summer. But once again, I do take this onto my lower lash, but I'm only going to use that at the outer edge, just connecting the shadows. Now I'm going to take Shining Moon and I'm going to place this at the inner third of my eyes. Shining Moon is a satin shadow, so pretty much it is a matte base, but it has little specks of glitters in it. So when I'm packing this onto my lid, you are going to see a little bit of glitters just here and there. It's not too obvious at all. It's very subtle, so I think this is like a good base just to brighten up that inner third area. And then I'm going to take Silver Crystal. I am using this slightly wet and I'm going to start tapping this on top of Shining Moon. I don't want the little glitters to pop out so tapping that on is going to bring those glitters out and you can see I am just diffusing this all over my inner lid. And because I am tapping you are going to have a little bit of fallout with the little glitters but it's not too noticeable but I thought I would just mention that. Now I'm taking the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in the shade Stomper and I'm going to use this to tightline my upper waterline and also line my lash line but only at the outer third. I want this look to be more like a natural, fresh eye look. So using a dark brown eyeliner, it's not going to be too harsh and too intense. I think a brown is more subtle and it suits the vibe of the shadows. But I like to use a cotton bud to smudge that out and then go in further with an angled brush just to ever so slightly wing out that eyeliner. Now I am curling my lashes and applying mascara. The mascara that I'm using is the Fenty Beauty Full Frontal Mascara. 
And now it's time for blush. I'm taking the pressed powder blush in the shade Cat's Eye from the collection. I really didn't want to use it because I didn't want to get rid of the imprint because it's so stinking cute. But this blush does have a bit of a sheen to it. So if you just want to apply that to the apples of your cheeks and you don't want to go in further with highlighter, it does give you a bit like of a subtle glow. Alright you guys, so this is the first look completed. For the first look, I wanted to create something that was a little bit more natural and approachable because I think when you look at a colorful palette, you're sort of thinking, how can I use this in my day-to-day -day life? How can I get the most use out of this? Because not every day we're going to wear colorful shadows. So hopefully this first look gave you some inspiration in how you could wear these colorful shadows in more of an approachable way. I know it's a little bit bright, but I feel like it's still quite subtle. You could wear this out to brunch. And also we're not wearing false lashes, so I wanted to give you a look where I wasn't wearing any because I know not all of you guys do wear false lashes but for my lip pairing I went with the ultra bottle lip in the shade Usagi and the ultra glossy lip in Sailor Moon paired on top of that and I feel like this is like the perfect combo I mean the names are just so perfect together as well I just thought it was a nice combo to wear for this eye look And now onto the second look, I'm going to start off with the shade Moon Castle and this is going to be our transition shadow. I'm just going to work that into my crease, blowing that out up to my brow bone and outer corners. Moon Castle on my skin tone, I do need to build up just like Twilight Flesh, but that's no problem because again, I do enjoy a bit of build shadow, especially when it comes to a transition shadow. I'm also going to take Moon Castle onto my lower lash line as well, just blending that from the outer corner right to the inner corner. Next, I'm going to take Miracle Romance and I'm going to pack this onto my lid space first. I'm just going to pack that on, get the pigmentation there, and then I'll slowly blend that up towards my crease area into the pink transition. And I think the transition shadow and Miracle Romance gives you a really nice combination of like a pinky periwinkle purple. But I'm also going to take that onto my lower lash line as well. I'm using a pretty big brush just to diffuse this all over. Next, I'm going to go into Luna and I'll be using this shadow wet. I'm going to place that right at the center of my eye. Wherever your brush touches first is where the most pigmentation is going to be. So I want the most pigmentation right at the center because that is where the light catches first. So placing that at the center and then I'll diffuse the edges out so it like blends out so it's not just like one stripe in the middle of your lid. But I also repeat the same thing on my lower lash. I'm just placing Luna at the center on my lower lash. And then I'm going to take the glitter gel in Moon Prism Powder and I'm going to apply this right on top of Luna. So this specific glitter gel, it has little chunky glitters in it, but it also has little chunky stars and moon glitters. So on my lid space, I'm mainly just going to pick up the chunky glitters, like the circle glitters, and just diffuse that right at the center. But on my lower lash line at the center, on my left eye, I grab one of the little moon chunks and place that right at the center. And then on my right eye, I place a start and then of course I diffuse that out with the other little specks of glitters. I actually have a little pack of these little stars and I play around with them a lot in my makeup looks. I always have to use glitter glue to paste them on so it's nice that this comes with a bunch of them and it's already in a gel so it's going to stick on really easily and it's pretty easy to work with. I think the only thing with the glitter gels is that if you are swiping you are going to swipe off a little bit of the shadow underneath it so I would say just tap and use a light amount. And now it's time for eyeliner. I'm taking the ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in the shade Charmer and I'm going to use this to tight line my upper waterline and also line my lash line to create a wing. Pretty similar to the first look, I'm going to go in with an angled brush to smudge that out and create a very soft wing. If you have like a purple liquid eyeliner, you could do that, but if you don't, this is a good alternative is just to use a cold eyeliner and smudge that out to create a wing. Then I'm going to curl my lashes and apply mascara. I'm using the same mascara as the first look, the Fenty Beauty Full Frontal Mascara. But for my lashes, these ones are from Petite Cosmetics in the Style Daisy. 
As for blush, I'm going in with the Press Powder Blush in the shade From the Moon, and I'm just applying that to the apples of my cheeks, a little bit on my nose, but mainly on the apples of my cheeks to give a very girly, fresh, cutesy look. Alright you guys, so this is the second look completed. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I just wanted to show you a way that you could use the glitter and I feel like my go-to way of using glitter is definitely creating glitter tears and placing it at the center of my eye and doing like a halo eye effect. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this second look. But for my final lip pairing, I went with the Ultra Bottle Lip in the shade Bunhead. Now onto the final look, I'm going to start off with the shade Love and this is going at the outer corners of my eyes. I'm just going to pack that on just to get the pigmentation there and then I'll use circular motions just to blow this out. You just want to focus this at the outer corner because this is going to be the start of like a gradient eye. I'm also going to take this shadow onto my lower lash line as well but again just at the outer third and making sure you are connecting the shadow so that way the eye look can look like it's coming together as one. Next, I'm going to go into the shade Tuxedo Rose and I'm going to pack this on at the center of my eyes right next to Love. And these two shades, they are slightly different but they are in the same color family so they blend really well together and it's going to really create this beautiful sunset gradient. And you also just want to repeat that onto your lower lash line as well. Then I'm going into Justice and I'm going to place this at the inner third of my eyes right next to Tuxedo Rose. I'm first using a pencil brush just to get right into the inner part of my eye because I do have a slight fold there. But then I'll go in with a small fluffy brush to blow that out. I'm also going to bring that towards the inner corners of my eyes to highlight that area and sort of create a yellow base. And like you guessed it, also on the lower lash right at the inner corner, we're going to connect those yellows together. Next, I'm going to take Full Moon and I'm going to place that right on top of the matte yellow. I just want this to be like blown out and just let the glitters shine through. I do bring this into my inner corners to highlight that area and also on my lower lash line where the yellow is as well. Pretty much wherever the yellow is, you just want to put Full Moon on top of that. Now I'm going to take Moonlight Legend and I'm just going to take a little bit of this and I'm going to place this at the center of my eyes on top of Tuxedo Rose. Honestly, I would skip using the glitter but I already did it on my other eye so I have to do it on this eye. It's just that I noticed it was lifting up the shadow underneath but it does add some pretty dimension to the eyes and it really sparkles through which I love. Now it's time for eyeliner. I'm taking the ColourPop BF Ever Liquid Liner in the shade Grande and I'm going to use this to line my eyes and also create a little baby wing. Then I'm going to prep my lashes by giving them a good curl and applying mascara. Same mascara as the other two looks. And then I'm going to pop on my lashes. These ones are from House of Lashes in the style Bedore Light. And for my blush, I'm taking From the Moon and I'm going to apply that to the tops of my cheekbones and a little bit on my nose. I thought the brighter pink blush would suit the bright pink outer corners and really tie in the look. Alright you guys, so this is the final look completed. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I feel like it's such a pretty and fun summertime eye look, but it also represents Sailor Moon's aesthetic with the yellow and pink. But for my final lip pairing, I decided to go with the Ultra Bottle Lip in the shade Usagi. 
Alright you guys, so this is going to complete today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful even if the collection came out months and months ago. I still hope this video was enjoyable to watch. But if you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up for me. I would appreciate it so much if you did. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. What do you guys think of the look? What do you guys think of the collection? Did you guys already purchase it? Let me know what you guys think about it down below. I love chatting with you guys after every upload. Literally my favorite thing to do. So drop your comments down below. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!